In the future, this may be what keeps the lights on in your home. But don't be deceived. It's not a windmill that will block your favorite view. In December, off Roosevelt Island in New York City, a company called Verdant Power began installing two underwater turbines. At 20 feet tall and weighing four tons, they are the first of their kind and are designed to produce power for a local grocery store and the parking garage above it. It's not like wind turbines. And what we're using are the tidal currents to turn these turbines. When the tide changes, the turbines will swing around. The project took years of planning. But now it was trial time. All the engineers had to do was wait for the perfect slack tide. It's taking a, a little bit longer to rig the lift for the turbine than uh, I would have hoped. We only have about 15 minutes to go to get the thing in the water. We have to do all our work with the divers at slack tide because the divers simply can't hold on once the current gets too strong. And then if it gets stronger, it becomes very dangerous for them. With the rising cost of oil and electricity, not to mention several recent blackouts in the New York area, proponents hope the turbines will provide an independent source of reliable and renewable energy. But the engineers have a lot more to prove than just that they work. The issue uh, here in the East River or anywhere in, 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 in an aquatic ecosystem is what are, what's the impact that these turbines going to have on fish and other types of critters that live in the river. The turbines work very much like windmills. When water rushes by them, they spin and generate electricity. But the engineers think they may be even better. Wind power is a variable source of power and also unpredictable. Uh, you don't know more than a few minutes out what the wind is going to be at a given location. With water power, especially tidal power, it's driven by the phases of the, the moon and the sun, and the predictions are very good for how much power it can generate months in advance. Turbine 1 is a test turbine. It's loaded with monitors that will measure the stress it will face in the river. Turbine 2 has a generator inside. If the project works as planned, Verdon imagines installing two or three hundred turbines in the immediate area. But first, Verdant needs to satisfy a number of requirements, showing that fish and the existing environment won't be harmed. The blade rotation is fairly slow, but out at the tip of the blade, uh, they can move as fast as about 25 feet per second, which is a significant speed. Um, and so that could cause a problem if there were fish going through the field at the end of those blades. For months, Verdant has been using underwater monitors to scan for fish. Recording, and you can see that there are no fish. Um, but we do have some really neat, neat looking fish to show you. That's a striped bass. Mm -hmm. But you don't see very many. I mean, the current moves so fast that a lot of fish just don't spend very much time around here. The water moves too quickly, and so they have to fight the current a lot. As Turbine 1 slipped into the water, all eyes were on the control room gauges. And for good reason. Looks like another leak down here. All green. All green. Keep all green. Knowing they only had 20 minutes until the current picked up, the divers kept working. But as it turned out, the trouble was more virtual than real. Everything's good as usual. It was a computer problem. The turbine went into the water very smoothly, very quickly, faster actually than we anticipated. What they hadn't anticipated was that the next day, all three blades on Turbine 1 would be shred apart, just as Turbine 2 went into the water. We didn't mean to break the turbine. But uh, the turbine rotor did break and, and broke very dramatically. Uh, and we're studying exactly whether it was part of the test regime or something hit it or some other structural problem uh, in the rotor uh, that caused that failure. Even with Turbine 1 back out of the water, Turbine 2 was in, operating and picking up speed. But with engineers from Con Edison, New York's electric company, on site for inspection, Turbine 2 had a lot to live up to. The water speed is just coming up now, and when it gets to a high enough speed, we'll connect it to the grid when it's ready to generate power. The uh, red light will come on, indicating that the contactor's closed, and you'll hear it uh, with a big clunk because it's a big electric switch. The red shows that the generator's connected, and power is flowing from the generator to the Christie supermarket. The transition was so smooth that the lights at the Gristiti supermarket didn't even flicker. 
In a statement, Con Edison confirmed that everything was designed as planned and operated as designed. Back in the control room, the fish monitors were on, but no fish were in sight. Only the blur of Turbine 2 itself was visible. At slack tide, when the river is still and the turbines aren't working, the grocery store will switch back to the grid automatically. Over the next three months, Verdant's engineers plan to install four more turbines as part of this test project. If all goes well, they may receive a federal license to install hundreds. Now that's enough for maybe eight to 9,000 homes. The interesting thing is, this is just one project, and there could be as many as four or five similar projects all around Manhattan. If we did that, if we completed all those projects, it could make New York...